Hello and welcome to the season finale of this season of Morning Reads. I'm your host, Alex Williams, and to coincide with the Gamera box set released by her Aero video, we are reading a Gamera fic known as Gamera, the Great and Powerful, by Legendary Goji. Warning, this following story tells a different continuity. Gamera, Gauss, and any other monsters may have their own stories tweaked, and Oz and the Great and Powerful belongs to Disney. Please support the official release. Summary, after no. defeating the wit- Oh, fuck you then! <laughs> <laughs> after defeating the Wicked Witch, Glinda thought the p- that peace has returned to the land of Oz, but when a horde of Gauss escapes into the world and begins causing havoc, no one is safe. But luckily for Glinda, her sister from the south reawakens a giant monster Gamera to combat the Gauss. Will he succeed? and save the world, or will Gamma turn on the people? Find out in this one chapter. Prologue, The Guardian. A long time ago, a woman screams in terror as a bat-like creature pounces onto her. The creature sinks its fangs into her neck, slipping up her blood in the process. The entire world is completely filled with hordes of flying, bat-like vampire creatures known as Gyaos, creatures hungry for blood. You know, this is actually different than what we usually read. It actually makes sense. So far. The entire world is filled, completely filled with hordes of flying bat-like vampire creature, creatures known as Gals. Creatures hungry for blood. A, gra- a gal bites down onto a flying monkey and it begins began drinking its blood, causing it to grow bigger. Oh, the gal rears back its head and lets out a mighty roar. A boy, little boy, hid, hids, <laughs> hids underneath the chariot, cowering from the chaos around him. I, I'll pass here. I need to go wash dishes. What a good boy. The monsters are everywhere, feasting on human blood. All of a sudden, a gal slams on the ground and let out a mighty roar. The boy widened his eyes in horror as the gauss began to slowly approach him, growling in anger. The gauss opened his jaws and strikes down, preparing to attack the boy. The boy shields himself with his arms, braced for a painful blow, but to his surprise, instead of receiving a bite, he heard the sound of a magic blast and the creature screech of pain. The boy opens his eyes and he, and he, and he his eyes widen and all. Uh, can you uh, speak up here a little quiet, man? Bacon? Speak up, damn it! Gilda, the good witch of the south, offers the boy a hand, and with a soft smile, she questions, Are you alright, young one? Pass. The boy shook his head, and he took Glinda's hand. As Glinda helps him up, she heard a loud roar from behind. She turned, and her eyes her eyes widens in horror upon Notice Big, two Greek gals growling at her. Glinda quickly fires a magic blast at them before running off, pulling the boy with her. Glinda runs through the burning city before laying side of her castle. Glinda opens the door, ushers the boy inside, and she quickly shuts the door. Glinda turns and she saw her guards and her people inside taking refuge from the attack outside. One farm girl questions Glinda. Glinda, what's going on? What, what are those things out there? Glinda answers, I do not know. These, those creatures have been out there attacking the innocent. There's nothing I could do to stop them. A munchkin questions. <laughs> what can we do? Glinda shook her head and she hopelessly falls onto the ground, whispering in sorrow. I don't know. I really don't know. People closes their eyes and fills them. There is no hope. The Gauss might wipe them all out in a matter of time. But when, just when things are hopeless, all of a sudden, a young emerald girl heard a loud thud, causing her to open her eyes. Thud could be look up. A sudden loud roar fills the air and opens her eyes in shock. There's something out there, something very big. Curious, Glinda and the people scales up the stairs to investigate the source of the sound outside. Glinda enters the upper room and she pushes the balcony door open and what she saw causes her to gasp in shock. Outside, the gauss turns and their eyes widens at what approaches them. The gigantic monster giant turtle steps out of the clouds, towering over the smaller gal. <gasps> Yongri! <laughs> steps out of the clouds, like they're physical things and not just big clouds of water. I guess so. That's how that works. As the turtle halts in its tracks, Oh, the people watches in sheer shock and terror as the creature stomps towards the gals. As the turtle halts in its tracks, and it is tracks, it rears back and it lets out a one mighty deafening roar. Glinda and the people closes their eyes and they cover their ears, <laughs> shielding their eardrums from the sheer volume of the monster's battle cry. Grammar and proper punctuation is dying here. <laughs> yes, it is. 
The gale roars angrily at the turtle and flies towards it, but the turtle swing, swung its thick, muscular arm, swatting the gauss aside, away. The gauss slams into a mountain and it collapses onto the ground, dead. Two gauss roars at it and the two began flying towards the monster. The turtle dodges the first gauss tag before striking its elbow down onto the second. As the gauss crashes onto the ground, the turtle grabs the first gauss by its one mighty push. It broke both its wings. And the gauss roars in pain, squirming and thrashing. I'm gonna pass. The turtle grabs the gauss by the neck and slams it into the second gauss, killing both of them. Five gauss roars, and they flew forward to the confront the Yonkiri. The turtle got into a battle stance, and as a gauss closes in, it threw an uppercut, knocking the gauss back. The duck moves aside as another gauss snaps it is jaws at it. The turtle ducks as a third gauss bites at it. The chicken grabs both gals by the neck, and he slams the two together, killing them again. One gal fires a fireball at the turtle, causing it to explode on, onto the crocodile. Wait, wait a upon... minute. Hold on a second. That... Gals firing a fireball? What the heck? You got the wrong monster. Yeah. And author doesn't know shit. <laughs> upon seeing that, the other gals began firing fireballs at the duck, hoping to destroy it. As the, t as the cricket explodes... The gals begin roaring in victory, deeming themselves victorious. However, it is too soon to celebrate. The gals looked as they noticed something billowing in the smoke. As the smoke clears, Glinda's eyes widen. As she saw the turtle standing, it's ground. It is ground. It is ground. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> Unhurt. The pig glares at it is opponents, seemingly unfazed by, but angered by the attack. The gals began roaring in unison, and the entire horde began flying towards it. The people screams in terror as they watch as the gals closing in. My precious! Glinda quickly ushers her people inside, unwilling to let the gals get them. As she ushers an old woman inside, Glinda turns, and what she saw shocked her. The doggy stood protectively in front of the, the, her, the her castle, growling at the oncoming horde. The dodo bird turned to it his head, staring down at Glenda. As Glenda looks up, the creature makes a low, assuring growl as if to stay. Do not fear, my dear. I will protect you no matter what, said Gamera, I assume. Glenda's face brightens as she watches the turtle facing the gals horde. As the gals horde closes in, the turtle rears it his head, and it began summoning an orange aura it is throat. When the first gals of the horde raises it is jaws to strike, the turtle fires a powerful fire blast from it is mouth, incinerating the gals. The gals roars in pain and fury as the fire began, incinerating their bodies. The gals roars as it is body began disintegrating. Within minutes, there was a mighty explosion, an explosion bright enough to temporarily turn the night into day. Glinda shuts her eyes, blinded by brightness. Within seconds after the explosion, the flame dies down and the worked is shrouded in darkness once again. Glinda slowly opens her eyes and her eyes widen in shock. The gals are completely wiped out by the turtle's attack. The turtle let, let out a mighty victory roar, triumphant from an it is battle against the gals. The gappa turns around and it stares down at Glinda. Pass. Alright, finally. As the people began stepping out of the house to look at the turtle, Glinda spoke up. Wiz, can we ever thank you Enough for saving us. How can the people of Oz repay you? The turtle roars at her to say, I need no reward, young witch. I, he could have said something else right there. Anyway, it is my duty to protect this planet and it is natives. Glinda and the people of Oz began kneeling down in respect, bowing to pay tribute to their hero. However, the monster roars to say, Dear humans, I do not need your gratitude. I protect you so that you can live your lives to the fullest. Be yourself and make your lives count for something. Glinda. Okay, Jesus. <laughs> Glinda questions the turtle who is not speaking because it's saying to say, as if to say. So that means he's not actually talking. It's just the author conveying dialogue to get the idea across. Anyway, I'm sorry for asking this, but who are you? The turtle made a low growl, as if to say. And this is her coming to logical to uh, conclusions here. So she could totally be making up all this dialogue and we wouldn't know. I am known as Gamera, the guardian of the universe. And you, Glinda, you and your sister have used your powers to protect the innocent. You have earned my respect. 
Glinda smiles and she said, and you have earned ours. The turtle drops onto all fours as it retracts it is hind legs back into it is shell. Ugh. Almost immediately, fire began billowing from the leg holes and the turtle began to take flight. As Glinda laughs loud, why? The people of Oz began cheering wildly, thanking their hero for saving them. As they all get crushed to death. Gamera made one mighty roar to bid the people of Oz farewell before he began flying off. Wow, was that a competent sentence there for a second? What the heck? Whoa! As Gamera took off in the air, he looks down at Glinda and he growls to her to say to, say to her, By the way, be on the lookout for a wizard. Confused, Glinda questions Gamera. Wizard? What wizard? Who is he? Gamera roars back at her to answer as he disappears into the clouds. Oz, the Wizard of Oz. As Glinda watches Gamera flies off, she began to ponder his words. The, ma ma the Master Tinker walks up to Glinda and he questions, What did he say, Glinda? Glinda replies, He mentioned a wizard. The Master Tinker raises an eyebrow and he questions, Oh, a wizard? What kind of wizard is he? Gl Glinda answers, The Wizard of Oz. In fact, let's go prepare for his arrival. To be continued never. Uh, Last updated, August 29th. 2017. So yeah, I don't expect this one to be continued. That's when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. Yeah, I know. Yeah. In internet time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, let's see. Let's review this properly from top to bottom. Bacon, what'd you think of it? I don't know. It's bad. A better written than else we've written. Eh? Yeah, no, it... I guess Nagoda didn't like your review. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Uh, GVR? Uh, it was bad. But, like, it it's just sort of an anticlimax after the glorious clusterfuck that was Doom Rage Across Dimensions. Oh, and oh no. Do nothing's gonna be Doom this season. Or yeah, the, and you know, the Godzilla Queen Ghidorah sex fate. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah, like, between that and the genuinely heart-wrenching story we just finished reading, this is just sort of a, it's there. Yeah. But On any other night, it would have been the highlight, but after those two. The, yeah, this is not the best of the worst. <laughs> this is the, this is the, uh, the demon warp of uh, fic, fanfics. I was going to say, it's like any movie that comes after, like, the, what was the movie that came after Ryan's Babe on Best of the Worst. Demon War. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was that. It was like, it would have been good if it had come before, but no. This fic is so... This fic is really just boring. It's like the Gambra the Super Monster of fics. Makes you wonder if it will be on the Arrow set since that movie's on there. Oh, I guess so. We'll, we'll have to see. How low will Arrow go? <laughs> But yeah, goddamn, this was so boring. But yeah, they but GBR basically said it well. It would have been more funny had we not read the other two before this. Very much agree. This is a again, it's not as funny bad as Doom Guy's story, where Doom Guy's just the Mary Sue with the self insert and a bunch of things <laughs> happen at once. And I think we probably skipped over some points in the plot just to get to the end because the author didn't feel like writing it anymore. That was friggin' the Doom Guy one, Rage Across Dimensions. This is just. I mean, sure, I'm sure there would have been more of a story to follow on, but because we don't get that story, it just kind of ends on the anticlimax. It doesn't have its own sense of resolution. Because it's just meant to be the beginning of something that never got continued up on. Uh, the sad part, like, the problem with this one, uh, this, I think there was a similar problem with uh, the other one, uh, like, Rage Across Dimensions. Uh, like, this one very similarly suffers from a lot of present tense. It's like, your story should not never be written in present tense, past tense only, uh, unless it is dialogue. And the way it's sort of formatted is awkward, and there's like, it's only long, because, like, the paragraphs are all broken down to, like, these one-sentence paragraphs. It's just, like, makes it longer than what it really is. 
Uh, Which is better, this or the wall of text in Doom? Oh, that's a great question. Because on one hand, at, le at least this makes it feel like you're getting somewhere, I guess. I don't know. That, that's hard to say when the, the wall of text... Uh, the wall of text of Doom is a little hard to read, so I'd say spreading it out is better. So I'll give it that much. It's just structured not well uh, when it comes to spreading that information out. Uh... And yeah, like I said, a lot of present tensing, a lot of it is instead of it's without the apostrophe. Uh, there, there's a good reason why we kept going it is, because yeah, that's the wrong it's. The rule of the apostrophe does not apply to it's unless it is it is. <laughs> when will someone write a story in future tense? In the future. <laughs> That'd be great. How the heck would you write a story in future tense? You know what? I'm curious. Alright. But nevertheless, yeah, this definitely just needs, like, I, uh, a decent... Patches! <laughs> Wait. Hold on, hold on. Hey, Patches! Oh, it's Patches! Hey! Yay! Welcome to... This story needs to be burned. <laughs> right. But yeah, no. It's like, there at least would have been something that's, like, not great, but alright, had it had its grammatical fixes. It doesn't fix everything within the story. It needed more meat, and too much goes by without much real weight to it. Like, you never get the real se dramatic sense of it's the end of everything. It's just sort of like, oh, this is the beginning of a story. Someone's going to come in and save it, rather than feeling like, oh, it's doom and gloom for the Land of Oz. Um, even if the grammatical issues had been fixed, this is still not a good story by any stretch of the imagination. I think a Gamera Wizard of Oz crossover crossover would be interesting, and I think crossing it over with Oz the Great and Powerful is at least, I guess, appropriate enough since it like you know forces action in there in a story in a like a continuity where action wasn't really a thing. So it's like, all right, it's at least appropriate enough that it's like, okay, we got action sequences here. It's at least appropriate with it, the crossover with the uh, version of Wizard of Oz it's going for, which is Oz the Great. It, and Powerful. It, it, it made more sense than the other Godzilla fic we read that had Wizard of Oz characters. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so at least there was at least, again, because we don't have the full story, we don't know how these creatures graded into this world. But it, do it did sort of seem like there was going to be an attempt at, judging from the uh, warning at the beginning of the, uh, like, before the summary... There, it sounded like there were, was going to be a story explaining how Gamera, Gauss, and the other Gamera monsters would have fit into this world, which would have been interesting. But even then, oh yeah, even then, I think that would have been that would have been uh, overshadowed by it, the like the flaws in the writing that just would have made it fall flat on its face, no matter how interesting it would have been. It's this is def I think had we read this before the. Uh, diary of a wimpy kid one I think we'd probably be getting more laughs out of it but yeah that wimpy kid one was made us feel like wimps anyway <laughs> yeah. uh, so like the wimpy kid story this season's going out with the whimper yes and Patches has something to say thanks for joining us on this season of the morning of the reeds thank you for listening to bad fanfics with this We'll see you next time for the Halloween special. Bye. Maybe, maybe uh, it's probably Are we still recording. Happen. See you next time, guys. See you next time. Kill me. Season Kill ends. Me. Bye. Kill me. Another season done. Another vacation. <laughs> yeah, you said it. It was quite a ride we went on in our house. It was nice just sitting together reading fanfics that made no sense. That it was, son. That it was. So, Bacon, this being your first season at all, what did you think of it? I loved it! When can we do this again? Soon, soon, my son. For now, we just celebrate surviving another season. I could get down with that. In fact, if it's all the same with you, I'd like to live here. I'd love to have you around more often. Thanks, Dad. But since you're sticking around, it's time you do some chores. I doubt your bitch of a mother taught you some responsibility. What? Yup. You get to experience every part of your childhood. Lots and lots of chores. Oh, that's right. I have a son too. 
Nagoda, you get to help Bacon out with the chores. What? You kids get to spend a part of the day making sure the house is in stable condition, while us adults get to binge watch on the couch. A fucking bruh moment. Why am I being made to do chores now? Eh, thought it would be nice of you to pitch in. But I make the banners for all of you, isn't that enough? Yeah, but that only helps with the videos, it doesn't help with the rest of the year. Fine. You'll oppress us forever, mark my words we'll have our revenge. Sounds great, why don't you get revenge on the toilets by cleaning them? Fuck you! So, where does that leave me? Can I go? Sure, we don't care. Wait, what? I can leave? Woohoo! Good luck with the corona! This is gonna be great. I finally have my freedom again. I can go back to working at Grubhub. I can finally live my life and not read shitty fanfics. You have been evicted from your apartment. Oh. Hey, uh, you don't mind if I still stay here, right? Sure. As long as you help the good and bacon around the house. What? But I'm not a kid. Yeah, but this is how you'll be paying rent. So grab a mop, buckaroo, and start mopping. I hate my life. And I love mine. So, what should we binge watch first? I don't know. What's there to watch? There's... nothing new on. Fuck. I think everyone's dead. Fuck. When will someone write a story in future tense? Ugh.